Have you ever heard the phrase, you can never have too many decoys? Well, if you have, smash that like button and tell me how many decoys you typically use on a normal day's duck hunt. Because we're talking about decoys this time on Surviving Duck Season. Surviving Duck Season, offering you the best waterfowl content. Subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, and don't miss any of our great content. Presented by Mojo Outdoors and high and dry. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Joel Strickland. I've had quite a few questions about decoys. Uh, how many decoys should I use? What kind of decoys should I use? You know, brands of decoys. Um, how do I arrange decoys? I want to know some diagrams. How do you put out your decoys? Okay, so today we're gonna tackle a lot of those things and uh, let's get right into it. You know, living in Arkansas, um, the, the volume of birds that we see on a daily basis, the way we hunt, um, where we are in the flyway as they migrate south, you know, it changes the way that I think about duck hunting and the way that I hunt, the way I use decoys, the way I call, compared to guys that are further up, you know, in North America or even down in Louisiana. And so, you know, for me, decoys are not the most important part of my setup. Um, honestly, where I am hunting is number one, number two is my call, and then number three is the decoys and motion, and I've kind of put those equal, is decoys and motion. I can't overstate the importance of movement in your decoys. You know, when you look at a group of ducks on the water, um, feeding or doing whatever they're doing, whether it's five ducks or 5,000 ducks, they're all moving. You know, they're preening, they're, they're dabbling, they're flapping their wings. If your decoys don't look kind of like that, it's going to look weird to them. You've got to have movement. You've got to have a jerk cord. You've got to have other types of motion in your decoys, mojos and that sort of thing. And so, you know, my philosophy with decoys is that I'm using decoys to tell the ducks where I want them to try to land. That's the whole purpose of them. You know, you can use a call only if you're hunting in flooded timber, you're hunting in a marsh where there's lots and lots of cover and the ducks couldn't necessarily see where a duck might be sitting. Um, but if you put a decoy in that spot to draw the bird's attention to that area and, and hopefully they're not gonna look at you because where you're calling is not where you want them to land, right? I mean, if you're in a blind, you don't want them to land in the blind with you and you don't want them to look at the blind. So the whole point of decoys is to get them out in front of where, you know, where you're hunting, where you want them to try to land. I'm setting up in a spot where I think ducks are coming to anyway. You know, either that or they're flying over where I'm at. Then I'm just kind of guiding them to where I want them to be so I can get them close enough to shoot. That's my point. Um, and, and I think that that philosophy probably works for most people in most areas. How many decoys should you use? Well, I typically use no more than five dozen decoys, you know, as far as duck decoys go. Um, a lot of times I'll use less than that. I mean, there's been many times, you know, that I'll just use maybe even six or eight or 10 decoys. What about using a lot of decoys? Is there ever a time to use a lot of decoys? Yes. I don't hardly ever do it. In fact, I can't even tell you the last time I used more than 60 or 80 duck decoys. You know, just never do. I mean, goose, goose hunting different, but for duck hunting, we just don't ever need to do that. Um, but when would be a time that you should think about using more decoys? Okay, if you hunt next to a refuge, if you hunt next to a rest area, um, there is a, you know, a high concentration of giant rafts of ducks a half a mile away or on the next property over, you know, if, if you're competing against somebody else that's hunting next to you and they are using a lot, a lot of decoys and they're sucking them all over to them, that's the times when you would consider using lots of decoys. What's a lot of decoys? I mean, I know people using that that use a thousand decoys and they set them up and leave them out all year. You know, there's quite a few people I know that use several hundred decoys, and so that's what we're talking about. You got to compete if you're trying to compete with the refuge that's a quarter mile away from you, and it's deafening because there's so many birds over there. You got to do something. You know, you got to do something to attract them. Here's the thing: you got to remember, though, you got to have as much movement 
as you have decoys. And so, you know, that becomes a problem. It makes it a big challenge, you know, especially if you're hunting in really shallow water. Most of the time I set up with a crossing wind. I almost never set up with, my, with the wind to my back. Uh, I know that that's contrary to what a lot of people tell you that you should do. Um, I find that I have much less success hunting with the wind at my back than I do with, with a side crossing wind. What happens is, you know, you've got your decoys out in front of you, your blind, you know, is where you're sitting at, and the ducks are coming straight in. So they're looking at the decoys, but when they look past the decoys, they see you're blind. And so you, you can't move, you can't do anything to distract them from the decoys because they're, you're always in line with those birds when they're coming in. And so you have a lot more of a chance of them spotting you and busting you when they're coming straight into you rather than if they're flying across. And so that's the main reason um, why I set up with a crossing wind. I typically put a larger block of decoys on the upwind side hoping that they're gonna stop before they get to the decoys. I'll put just a few decoys on the downwind side and then in the middle I have a have an open area that's a landing zone and I'll usually put some teal decoys in that landing zone and it's it's plenty large enough where I could land you know 50 ducks in there uh, I think that's very very important that you give birds enough room um, but at the same time don't spread your decoys out too much I, I know I think a lot of people when they when they arrange their decoys they put their decoys you know way too far apart it doesn't look as natural um, to ducks I mean watch ducks when they're when they're feeding and see how far apart they are that's how you that's how far apart you should put your decoys I don't do a J hook I don't do a V I don't put them in a line I mean I really don't have some you know elaborate, you know, diagram thing that I'm doing. I'm sorry to disappoint some of you, but I'll be honest with you. I just don't feel like that that's something that is really that important. Um, I know that, you know, diver hunting may be a little bit different, um, but as far as, you know, hunting mallards and gadwalls and teal and pindales and widgeons and stuff like that, you know, I just don't feel like that having a, a diagram is making that much a difference. I mean, honestly, if, if you did nothing other than put some decoys here and, de and decoys here and leave it open in the middle, I do that a lot. Now, let me give you a scenario that I bet every single one of you has encountered at least one time when you've duck hunted, okay? That is, you are working ducks and they're circling and circling, but they will never break that 50 yard mark they skirt past the edge of the decoys and then they'll make another pass and they'll skirt the edge of the decoys and make a pass and there's nothing you can do with them how do you fix it well some days there's not a lot you can do first thing to try bring all your decoys very close i mean i'm talking five feet from the blinds the first decoy and don't get them further out than 10 yards Try that, sometimes it works. You gotta have a really well hid blind for that. You can't have a blind that sticks out in the middle of everything. Number two thing to try is put a few decoys where you want the ducks to land. When I say a few, like five or six, maybe two or three pairs, dunk, 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 okay? That are at like 10 yards. And then take the bulk of your decoys out a little bit past where you've seen the ducks fly. Now I realize that's out of shotgun range. I get it. But if you make a line of decoys, you know, if you get three or four or five dozen decoys and put them way out there in front of you at like 50 yards where those ducks are flying anyway, and then you have six decoys in front of you, pair here, pair here, pair here, a lot of times those ducks will circle that and they'll actually circle right over your decoys there and they'll come in and land. Because sometimes ducks get decoy shy and they want to go to a few ducks. How many times have you had your decoys out in front of your blind and then the ducks will land like 75 yards away by themselves? How many times have you had a duck decoy float off because it, it come undone or it didn't have a long enough string or whatever and it floats off by itself 75, 80, 100 yards away and you've got all your decoys in front of you and, and a duck flies over and lands with that? It's worth a try.
I always move my mojos a lot, and I've got a video on that as well. Check out the video that talks about you know arranging your mojos in your decoy spread. But you know, I, I use my mojos most of the time in cover up close to the blind a lot of times. But don't feel bad about moving that sucker around. And I've moved them 60 yards away from the blind sometimes, and it works. So don't be afraid to move your stuff around. Don't be afraid to change your decoys up every day, every, multiple times during the hunt until it gets right. All right, so what's the takeaway? Well, number one is scouting. I mean, it has to be. Be in the right spot. doesn't matter how great a caller you are and how many decoys you got. If you're not in a spot that ducks are going to fly over or come to, you're probably wasting your time. So, but once you get there, remember ducks land into the wind. So set up your decoys accordingly. Be strategic in the way you place your decoys so that they have a place to land close to you. You can, man you can manipulate the way that ducks will fly and come in by the way that you place your decoys. If you can think about duck hunting and being strategic about your, about your calling and your decoys, then it'll really help you be a lot more effective in your duck hunting. Final tip, if you duck hunt in knee deep or less water, muddy your water up. I got a video right here. Check that video out when this one's finished. And there's another video right here. It's pretty cool. Check that one out as well. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. This week on Surviving Duck Season, I'm Joel Strickland. Good hunting and God bless.